Hey everybody, this is Joey. I am inside Infusionsoft here working on a couple of campaigns for myself and just uh, redoing things in a different way just to make it a little bit more convenient and so it runs automatically and to get all kinds of really cool reporting out of this. So I figured I would just turn on the camera and show you kind of what I'm doing and um, you know maybe help you along with your either Infusionsoft or whatever it is that you're using for behavioral type of marketing and moving people around. Really, it's about getting the data out of your uh, email campaign, right? So it's not just about sending an email. It's more about what kind of what did people do, the behavior that they've taken, and the goals that they've done. So I want to kind of walk you through what's going on here, what you see on the screen. It kind of if you've never seen Infusionsoft or maybe this kind of looks overwhelming, really it's not that bad. And I'm going to walk you through every single step here. At the beginning of the campaign, you know, what you don't see off screen there is really just a web form. And I didn't have room to move it on the screen here because I wanted to show you the back end of the funnel and, and really what happens, okay? So just uh, pretend that the beginning piece that you see on the left-hand side is a web form, and that can be coming from anywhere that you, you have your opt-ins. Uh, that could be connected to Kajabi, it could be connected to an optimized press or uh, a Thrive theme, whatever it is where you're getting your opt-ins, okay? So they opt in, and the first thing that happens is that little diamond at the left hand side makes a decision it's coming in it says hey is this contact confirmed or is it or is it not confirmed because what i want to try and do is i want to build my list to a confirmed list and the reason i do that is because um, it's a well-known fact that at least for infusionsoft and it's probably the same for everybody else but i'm gonna just use infusion because i, I know it well but it's this known fact that infusionsoft really separates the two. They separate a unconfirmed contact and they separate a confirmed contact. And what they do is the unconfirmed contacts are sent to a, are put on a lower server, a lower level server, which means that they usually go into the spam and all that other kind of stuff. So it's really worth the effort in confirming your contacts. Okay, so I really, really uh, advise you to have a confirmed list because the more and more we get into this email marketing and more people are doing it, more spam is going out, more people are not cleaning their lists, all that kind of stuff. I won't get into it with this video, um, but it just makes the ISPs like the Googles and the Yahoo's, all those guys, uh, really take care of how they're sending out emails and where they're going. So I want mine to be inside the inbox like we all do, right? So anyway, that's the reason why I do that, okay? So it automatically, when every single one of my lead magnet campaigns um, has a decision diamond right at the top and says, is this person confirmed or not? Now, depending on where they are, if they are confirmed, they go down to the bottom row and then they go through it and they don't have to confirm and that's great. If not, they go through the top uh, section and they click on to confirm their email. Now, here's the thing that I've been changing. This is not a standard way of doing things within Infusion. They have this uh, this confirmation sequence that they automatically have, and I don't use that. What I use is a, is a legacy type of uh, con confirmation. And again, that's a whole other video. It's not something I'm going to get into, but the, the reason I'm telling you this is because if you use the the uh, the gate, I would say it's called. I would call it a gate. The co the confirmation gate within Infusion, then they either have to confirm or they don't. And if they, and if they don't confirm, they kind of get stuck there and they don't do anything. And that's the way I used to run this for the last you know few years, right? So um, as I'm cleaning up my my backend funnels and all the stuff that's been there. Uh, there's been a lot of people who've just been on my list who has never really confirmed or anything, and they never really have been sent anything, so they're kind of dead weight, right? So I have to clean all that up. So now my decision is that they are still going to be in my system, whether they are confirmed or not. So if they come through here and they do not confirm, they don't click to download the email, or the, the lead magnet, they're still going to be marketed to. It just means they're not going to get this particular lead magnet. And what's going to happen is after five days, if they're sitting in that first sequence, it's going to stop the campaign. If you look all the way over to the, the right-hand side on the bottom, you see a stop tag there. And that's what that's for. It's to m remove people out of the sequence 
if they've never done anything or they're sitting in a certain place for a length of time. And usually it's it's around five to seven days that I let somebody hang around inside of a, of a, uh, of a campaign, right? So now they're coming in. So let's pretend that the person uh, has clicked and they go on to the next piece of the of the funnel, which is the bonding. And the bonding is really just me giving some really cool stuff that I want to bond with my my new prospect, right? Then the second piece is the the frequently asked email in this particular funnel. So they'll go through a couple of emails in the bonding. It's really cool stuff. I'm not selling them anything. And then the frequently asked email is the one where I know, like I'm using, um, I'm handling objections basically, or I'm answering questions that I know that people have about the product that I want to sell in this particular case. So really what this is, is the the bonding and the frequently asked email um, sequences at the top are bait emails, right? Or sort of the, the second one really is a bait because that's where all the clicks are. And you'll notice that, to the right of that frequently asked email uh, sequence, you see a clicked frequently asked email goal, right? So what I'm looking for is I've bonded with them, I've given them some really cool stuff, then they move on to the frequently asked email, and then I'm hoping they're going to click because I keep on giving links to like, hey, you know, I'm talking about the product and I'm clicking on the and, and they want to go check out the offer, right? So it's not a real offer, but it's uh, it's referencing and clicking to a sales page about the offer. If they click that because they're interested in it, what's going to happen is it's going to jump them over to the next piece of the campaign, which is the blind direct and the content goodwill. Again, it's another way of selling the same product, but now I know they're interested because they clicked on the frequently asked emails, right? So it's kind of an engagement. I know I can sell them a little bit harder at this point saying, hey, notice that you clicked this kind of thing, whatever. I don't really say that, but you know, that's kind of what it means. Like I, you've, you put your hand up, you're interested in this thing, and I'm going to try and sell this over, you know, the next couple of days to you. And then you'll see that, and that only lasts for like three days or something like that. Then what I do is you can see right there, it says, then wait seven days. So I might send them three, four, five emails or something over the course of, you know, a few days, maybe a week, and then I'll wait another, you know, seven days. Just It's just uh, my own best practice that I like to have because people, you know, sometimes they don't open their email right away. I'm not the most important thing in their inbox. Um, so I'll leave it there. And then if they don't do anything, then it'll, again, apply a tag and say stop the campaign and boom, it'll move it all the way down to the right side on the bottom and it'll stop and it'll move them out of the campaign. Now, this is the kind of stuff I never did really before. They were, if they never did anything, you see where that zero queued thing is um, in any of those campaigns. And you can see right now, I'm still cleaning this campaign up. You can see I left it there on purpose. The last one where it says did, did not buy on the top, uh, the top line, the top right. It says 59 queued. Like they've been sitting there for <laughs> like, you know, a year or two because I've never really done this type of Uh, cleaning up on the campaign. So what happens now is they get this stop tag applied and another tag that says didn't buy or saw offer didn't buy. So it depends on where they are, right? If they're in that blind direct content goodwill thing, and then after seven days, it'll move them over to the next campaign where that 59 is, it'll apply a tag and said, it'll say something like saw offer didn't buy and then stop, and then it'll move them out. So there won't be any 59 people there anymore. It'll be zero. And then I can easily find these people later on, which is really important. I'll come back to that in a second because I want to go back to where the, right back at the beginning where the confirmed people are, right? So the confirmed people, it's it's the same thing. If the really big thing here, what happens is at the beginning, when confirmed people come into this funnel, again, you can see where the lead magnet for confirmed contact is on the bottom of the bottom row. And then it's another decision diamond. It says, okay, well, this guy's already confirmed with you on your list, but did he buy this product that you're trying to sell already? Does he already have it? Because, you know, some sometimes people just opt in for lead magnets they, and they don't know that they're going to be sold a product that they already have. And that's what that decision diamond is for. So really, it's just, it's doing a, a big thing for me. So it's saying, okay, here, give him the lead magnet that he wanted, but if he's already got this thing, then it moves on to the right-hand side there again. It says, already AIB owners, remove the tags, 
and then it, it uh, puts a stop tag on there and advances them all the way to the end and pulls them out of the campaign, the stop campaign, right? So that's one way. Now, if they don't have it, okay, and they'll move up to the top line, they'll go into the bonding. So they're confirmed on my list, but they'll move up to the bonding because I want to bond with them. And they'll go through the exact same sequence again. Now, if they don't, depending on whether they're confirmed or not, doesn't matter. Within the bonding campaign and the frequently asked questions email campaign, or sorry, sequence, I should say, if they go through those two and then they sit there and they don't click, and again, they wait, it waits seven days, they don't do anything, they didn't bait, they go down to the bottom, they get tagged, they said, never saw the offer, which is cool because I can always send them to a different offer or like a, a different way of offering the same thing. This is the power of this. I really want you to get this because if they never clicked on the frequently asked email, then I know that they haven't seen the offer, right? They haven't seen the sales page yet, which is so important. And this is kind of where um, all my work is really kind of done for me. It's awesome. So then they never click. And then they go down to the didn't uh, click offer bait thing and they get that, that a tag there and then they're removed out of the campaign. So if I ever wanted to do a promo or anything like that, I could easily search on the tags that said, hey, who, who went into this campaign, never saw the offer, they didn't click on anything and they don't have this product. I can just do those two parameters, those two tags. And then I'll get a whole list of people like that and I can boom send them a promo or I can send them into a brand new campaign because I know that they've never seen this offer. Isn't that cool? And that's the same thing on the other side. If they do click through and they get into the didn't buy, then I can offer them and speak to them differently, right? I can, you know, two weeks from now or whatever it is, I can send them a different campaign or maybe a discount campaign or again, a different angle campaign, but speaking to them differently. Hey, Joey, notice that you checked out the, you know, this offer or this product. Uh, maybe it wasn't right for you to buy. And this is the, the worst copy ever, right? But, you know, you get where I'm going with this, you know, and and then I send them to a different way of trying to sell it, like a different angle. And that's where copywriting comes into play. That's where you can sell something or the same product over and over again by using different angles, not by hard selling going, hey, man, you know, this is, this is you know, there, there's only four days to buy this, buy it now. And then you become like those furniture stores that are going out of business like every single week, right? You don't want to be like that. So that is really the beauty of a campaign like this. So Hopefully, I broke this down for you enough that you can see that it's really not that complicated when you kind of look at it. Like when you first look at it, you're like, my God, there's a lot happening there. But really, all of those boxes, all of those sequences that you see are just like one little tag things in them, really, that are, are just contingency tags. They're, they're behavioral tags, and that's what I'm looking for. And the point is that you know, you want to be able to pull people out of the campaign because where whatever you're using with Infusionsoft, it's a goal-based system. So you want to be able to report on goals accomplished and not accomplished, right? Or I should say achieved. Goals achieved and not achieved. That's the way that you use Infusionsoft and probably every other you know, program that's out there. It's goal-based and it's not where you go back into the campaigns like I used to and, you know, click on that last uh, sequence where 59 people are, you see them, the queued 59, I would go in there and then I would sort sort those people and then send those people. So that's, that's something where I'm not doing anymore. I'm actually pulling them out of the campaign and putting them into an automatic super system that sends them through other campaigns that will hopefully sell them the product that I was intending to sell them in the first place. All right, so there is a little look inside the back end of my of one of my Infusionsoft funnels. Hopefully, I explained it to you well enough without me being right in front of you and whiteboarding this out and opening up all the campaigns and stuff. But if you have any questions or you know, anything like that that you want some help, and it really doesn't have to be with Infusionsoft, but if you have any questions like that, let me know and post it, and I'll get back to you and answer as best as I can. All right, talk to you soon.